We're going to be reacting to woke TikToks today. First up is Jeffrey Marsh, who I'm on your ass, Jeffrey Marsh, because a lot of the stuff you're posting has me looking at you hella sideways. Because you're getting into some groomer territory. This is, you know, um, sort of an infamous trans activist on TikTok. Let's, let's just watch. Your parents screwed up. It's okay to say so. <laughs> That's why I made a Patreon, so that we could talk about it, so that we could connect in a way that has more privacy, so that we could talk to each other in a way that's a, uh, more open and stuff that we wouldn't share like in the comments of a video like this. I think you're worthy and valuable. And I wanted to spend more connected time with you, healing together and hearing your deeply inspiring stories. <laughs> I'm laughing just because his voice is so cringe and his demeanor is so cringe and it's literally like, just like, what is this character that would, how is this a real person? But it's not funny in the sense of this person is like outwardly and openly saying, kids, come talk to me in private. Why do you need kids to come talk to you in private, Jeffrey Marsh? And why are you in like the pedo playbook of separating kids from their parents? Your parents screwed up. Come talk to me. I'm going to need this person's hard drive searched immediately. I'm going to need, since this is on Patreon, I'm going to need Patreon to check and see the ages of the people that are subscribing to this. And then I'm going to call Chris Hansen. Imagine Chris Hansen busting in on Jeffrey Marsh. It's clearly needed. I mean, I... I I think it's so funny because this person kind of talks like my grandma, like my grandma I'm estranged from. It's like just the voice. It's like it gives very like matronly old lady, but they don't let that fool you. This is a 45 year old man. Right. Wanting to speak to kids in private. And that's disgusting. Get it together. All right, this one was posted by Lids of TikTok, and it says we have a serious mental health crisis in this country, which is being exacerbated by TikTok. Let's see what she meant by that. My name is Tristan. I am the host of the Asylum System, and if you have met us, you have probably met me. My name is Onyx. I am the primary protector of the Asylum System. I mainly hold traumas regarding adulthood abuse and adulthood abusers. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm the social protector of the asylum system. I've been around for a very, very long time. Hi, I'm Doe. They don't really know about me yet. I don't know if they'll see this until later, but it's a secret. Hi, I'm Nova. I am the system caretaker. My name is Maple. I am a normal in the asylum system, and as of making this video, we're still working out my job. Hi, I'm Raina. Uh, I like this building. <laughs> I like how she threw a trans age identity in there. This is more than anything sad, right? And people make jokes about how like mental asylums need to come back. I'm not trying to be mean. Like, because the bigger issue isn't that this person is clearly, like, mentally ill to the extreme. The bigger issue is that this is, like, clearly, or maybe she's not mentally ill. That's that's also a thing. This person could very clearly just be performative with this. And TikTok has an algorithm that rewards it. TikTok has a lived out comment section that no matter what you say, right, they're gonna, it's going to be overwhelmingly supportive. Um, going back to that like expose with the um, whistleblower at the transgender clinic one of the things she was talking about at this clinic where they're giving minors cross-sex hormones and surgeries were that many of the young girls that were coming in had convinced themselves that they had tics that they did that they were able to actually get rid of like immediately upon getting like decent therapy that you know they were convinced they had all these other mental disorders because of tiktok 
TikTok is a mental illness factory. People are rewarded for both having mental illnesses and pretending to have mental illnesses. And granted, I know that can seem a bit hypocritical talking for me. I'm a fucking tranny. But the point is, I know what I am, right? And I'm not, I know what's going on here. (laughs) This is really sad. And, you know, I think the biggest victims of TikTok is teenage girls being convinced they have all these disorders and, you know, if she's not faking it. it's But it's like a chicken or the egg thing, right? So is she faking it or does she really have it and she's being rewarded for it? I guess it doesn't really matter. She needs help. All right, moving on. So, (laughs) speaking of mental illness, I like how, you know, there's supposedly all this anti-trans legislation. I need people to stop calling laws protecting kids anti-trans, right? Because I was the first one to speak up, not the first one, but you know what I'm saying. I spoke up on the piece of legislation. What state was it? I think it was um, Oklahoma or something. That was, um, I don't think it passed, but it was trying to move the age to transition up to 26. And I spoke against that because I said adults can do what they want. But all these anti-trans legislations popping out of the country, first of all, they're a result of people like you who spend their entire lives pushing for the sterilization of children, pushing for the mutilation of children. So you're getting what you asked for. But... It's like I'm being asked the other day. I got a slew slew of tweets, people saying, Blair, are you going to announce all this anti-trans legislation in Texas? I look at what they're talking about and it's just barring transition for minors, something I completely support. Absolutely insane. The caption of this says, no doctor is performing any surgery on anyone under the age of 18 in this country. Absolutely disgusting that we live in this algorithmically divided world where this person probably legitimately believes This is where people are going to say, oh, they're lying. I don't think he's lying. I think he legitimately believes trans surgeries are not being performed on people under the age of 18 because we're so separated by algorithm that he doesn't see it. I did a debate on No Jumper where I was debating three trans activists and none of them knew you could get double mastectomies under the age of 18 because their liberal feed on all their social media tells them Republicans are just lying about it. Conservatives are just lying about it. Meanwhile, I've read you story after story of minors getting these surgeries. There was an entire reality show on TLC, speaking of the Freak Show channel, with Jow Jennings getting her vaginoplasty as a teenager, as a minor, right? So this person's upset over laws that are protecting children. What a thing to be upset about. While you sit up here, a grown man with a beard... It, it's just disgusting. Why do they always look like that? They're like literally like copy paste NPC freak shows. Like I can't. All right. It's just me. Maybe I'm more annoyed about this than I should be. But it feels like extra disrespectful to misgender somebody when they have a pronoun pin on. Like, you know, I know I'm fun presenting. I know I look like a girl. But it's right here. It, like, I have a they, them, their pronoun pin right here. And people still call me a girl. People are still using she, her. And it's like, guys, come on. I'm, I'm not asking for much here. I'm literally just asking for people to use my pronouns that's all come on do better be respectful it's not hard to be respectful of people's pronouns can we try harder please you know all i'm trying to say here is just 
it be respectful of people. It feels really shitty to have something so clearly dictate what my pronouns are and people still misgender me. It's not hard to be respectful of people's pronouns. It's really not. Just because you keep saying something doesn't mean it's true. Right? So you can say over and over again how it's not hard for people to respect your pronouns. People don't talk like that. People don't refer to singular people as they, them, unless they, you are like visually obscured and can't see the actual gender of someone like in a car who cut you off in traffic, right? They, them is about a group. It's not about an individual person. And she's pointing, for the audio listeners, she's a Starbucks employee and she's pointing to a they, them pen on her, on her apron that has several other pins and like things on it. So you're asking every single person to look down, notice that particular pen, and understand that that means that you want to be called they, them. Go outside more. Touch grass. As I've been saying, all these people call your dad. Say you want to rekindle your relationship. I'm sure he'll forgive you. I'm sure you can fix things. The they, them shit kills me. It kills me. And it's just not going anywhere. Like, I understand... That everyone got really bored during the pandemic and everyone needed to invent problems as if the world wasn't falling apart as it was. Everyone needed to invent problems and come up with all this new shit. No. But it's a self-perpetuating cycle of victimhood these people put themselves in because when they go out in the world genuinely expecting people to call them they, them, Zizer, doll, doll self, they get that feedback loop of like, I'm a victim. My identity is a victim. And see, there's proof. When I go out, no one calls me they, they, by they, them. Yeah, because no one ever will. That's not how it works. Your friends on TikTok will. Your friends in your gender studies class will. Your other they, them friends will. And keep it at that. But you're, you're a woman. You even said in the video you present as femme and you get it. Clearly, you don't get it. I would respect this person more if they made an attempt to look androgynous or something, right? But, of course, an actual androgynous look takes a lot of work. People who actually have, like, an androgynous look to them and you look at them and you're like, what is that? That's that's something that's, like, that's not easy to actually attain. It's like, that's, like, a, a that puts work. But this this woman doesn't know anything about putting work in to actually get what she wants out of life, right? She's just putting on a, a, a they, them pen and expecting people to be bent to her will. It's not gonna happen. Hey, if you guys enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel and watch the full episode, which will be somewhere on the screen.